What I enjoy most about sour beers is, is that it's a giving situation. So there is that aggressive approach to your palate, but with each sip as your palate acclimates, you get another premise that you didn't know was there, and it, it's good for you. My name is Preston Wiesner. I'm the lead blender here at Cascade Brewing in Portland, Oregon. We're in inner southeast Portland. We're pretty much owning the sour world in this 10 block radius. What we're doing here is high gravity beer, aged in barrels with lactic acid, and then adding fruits like a baker would to a tart. And then we're letting it go and we're letting it evolve on its own. And then when it comes to fruition, we're blending it. There's a lot of different kinds of sours. They all start out as Saccharomyces, basic beers. But then there's Britannomyces, which is secondary uh, bug that some places would use. We use lacto. Lactobacillus is not nearly as uh, voracious as beer yeast or Saccharomyces. So it, it takes a little longer time. And so for us, that, that Lactobacillus slow, predictable characteristic uh, allows us to focus on the barrels while the lacto is doing their job. At Cascade, we don't have a lot of technology. It's kind of bohemian, cro magnon artistry. We don't have a lab or a centrifuge. Uh, but what we do have is this room. Uh, this is the bell room or the nursery. So the room is actually set up during the, the winter or spring or fall or summer to call for heat or cooling as needed. And then additionally, we have heaters in a column that have fans, and then we have a fan there. So this room, when closed, generates its own climate. So we want the room at about 60 to 62 degrees. We want it at about 80% humidity. It keeps the barrels kind of in a nice, happy environment, as opposed to distillery or maybe some breweries who are looking to see some angel share so they can concentrate their beers. Our beers actually go in concentrated. And as far as angel share, what we've really found is that angel share Hell no, they don't. They don't even say thanks, so we're certainly not going to give them a free beer. This is a red ale that we added uh, elderberries to. It's coming around nicely. Mm. It's going to be something. What you see there is after the bubbles drop, as you'll see like little buttresses or strips forming legs, as they would call them. A lot of people doing barrel aging will put a couple of pounds of fruit in. However, at Cascade, we really feel that if you're going to put fruit in a barrel, you should put fruit in the barrel. It should be present from the minute you open it on the nose. You should get a wave of that fruit all the way through in every aspect of that fruit. So uh, cherry bourbonic, it's about half cherries with what little beer we can squeeze on top. Wow. Wow. We, we probably shouldn't have got into that barrel. It's too good. We're putting something in the barrel and we're giving it faith that it's gonna turn out the way we think it's gonna turn out but oftentimes we have no history to understand how that's gonna be or, you know, there's a whole world going on there that we are not privy to other than the basic science. There's always something new around the corner and we're always, you know, looking to maybe repeat a process, um, but we're well aware of some of the processes here being beyond our own control. So if they're repeatable, certainly. Um, if they evolve a little bit and they turn out a little different, that's just part and parcel of what we do here.